Hello and welcome in this video. As you can see, I have a red hat. And it's a red hat. Red hat. It's a red hat from Red Hat. That's a good joke, right? To start the thing. Um, so what I wanted to talk about today is more like why should you take the RHCSA exam? Because, of course, it doesn't make sense to study if it doesn't bring you anything. Well, the thing is, like... Um, I think if you want to uh, have good basis for another exam, which is the RHCE, this is what I, the way I saw it, then it's important to have good basics with the RHCSA, and anyway, you need it as a prerequisite for this exam. The RHCE is for Ansible, so it's mostly automating stuff, but there is a discussion also, like, um, when you're learning about Linux and system administration and stuff like that, there are a couple of um, different certifications you can have and there is another one which is the Linux Plus so Linux Plus is not bad I passed it uh, like I think that was three four years ago and at the time it was not um, too difficult the thing is it, it it's I started as a complete beginner in system administration and I learned pretty quickly for everything in this exam now they made a new version which is apparently including some hands-on stuff but the difference, the big difference with the RHSA, and for instance, if you read uh, this kind of Reddit topic, uh, you read this thread and you will see that in this thread they talk about uh, the difference between Linux Plus and RHSA, and the big difference is like the RHSA is full hands-on, you just perform your stuff, and uh, whereas the Linux Plus is just theory and questions, so you have multiple choice questions, and um, you don't basically learn to do the stuff. This is the problem with uh, with Linux Plus. Like you will learn a lot of theory, but then when you arrive in a company and you need to do to actually do the stuff under pressure, then you're kind of a bit lost already. Like you you know some of the things, but some others you you're a bit lost. Where the the, the good thing with the RTSA is it's, it's really focusing on hands on. So I think for the recruiters, if you're trying to get your first job, it's important um, to start with. Uh, the RHCSA to directly do the hands-on because they will know ah this guy he knows he's been practicing real stuff he knows how to handle servers talking to one another he knows how to set up basic things so this is great for me it was more the RHCSA was more in this case about uh, a first step to the RHCE to learning more um, things about Ansible I, I'm already using Ansible for like three years now and, and I love it like Ansible is great um, I would just like to, you know, I always take this analogy with other things like I'm, I'm a martial artist, I do karate, for instance, and in karate it's very important that you learn the basics good. You, it, it, you can, you know, you can do some super great uh, complicated technique, but if you're not, if you cannot good, do good basics, then it's a bit pointless. It doesn't make any sense. You should really learn your basics, um, always better, improve your basics, and I think even when you're a big master, uh, the, the most important thing is to have extremely good basics. So learn your basics well, and I think the RHCSA is a good way to learn good basics. Of course, it's from Red Hat, but Red Hat transposes to anything Linux really. Like most of the things you will do in the Red Hat uh, in the RHCSA exam, you can use in uh, other Linux distributions. So it's really not a problem, and I think it, it opens uh, a field of possibilities for you, especially with the the hands-on work. So that's why I wanted to show to make this video to tell you why it's important. You can read this kind of discussion here. Um, if you if you scroll down, you know people are talking about this. There are other threads, but this one I think was pretty representative. Like, and also you have other threads where they they are talking about uh, version eight of uh, the Linux Plus exam, where they have they do implement some minor uh, performance-based questions. They call it, which is basically the hands-on stuff. But it's just two, right? Or I mean, sometimes three, as I understood. Like sometimes they don't really say even in. If you check the, the official website of Linux Plus here, they don't even say how much. You know, they just they will just tell you, um, yeah, you you will have some performance-based questions, but how much? I don't know. It, it depends on the exam. They have many different series for the exam, but yeah. So this is this is really the idea, and this is what I wanted to. Uh, talk to you about also like if you start with the RHCA with the RHCSA and then go through the RHCA it's a ECE it's a very good door to other things like uh, typically last year I was also taking the um, uh, CKA exam the um, certified Kubernetes administrator 
uh, exam, which is one of the Kubernetes exams from uh, the Linux Foundation. And it's, it's also a very cool exam. It's a bit different with Kubernetes. But then, if you know Kubernetes, if you know um, um, the, the Red Hat world with the good basics from the RHCSA, and then you combine that with uh, Ansible, with the RHCE, or you will maybe learn for, with OpenShift later with uh, Red Hat. I think you have a good background to learn a uh, wide range of things. And you can then also learn for with learn many other things that combine with it. It's not something isolated. You should think as as the system engineer or, or DevOps or whatever you you want to learn for. You should think about it as as something like holy, like like something um, holistic with a bunch of different uh, material that you grab from here and there, and you become more solid as a core. You know. I think I see it like this. So I don't know. Maybe I, I talk too much. Maybe I explain too many things. But I think, and and you see here, the objectives of the of the uh, RHCE are st uh, stipulated on the website. So this would be the next step. But it's also things I've been doing. Actually, I, I think I did all of this already. You know, like in live in my job. So, but I still wanted to pass the RHCSA because, uh, again, that always keep it in mind. I mean, this is my advice, if any. Um, learn the basics good and even later on even when you get better and better come back to the basics relearn them retry them because you forget also i forget um this is the point you know you go through your life and you do other things more complicated and so on and then at some point you kind of leave the basics and then you forget to really learn them good so yeah this is this is what i wanted to talk about and um if you take the exam, the RTSA exam, this is really like you learn to do things under pressure. But on the other hand, if you prepare good, there will be very limited amount of a very limited amount of pressure. Like you need to uh, perform in a certain amount of time. But if you follow my videos, for instance, and you you really uh, do all the labs the way I tell you to do the labs, and you listen to my explanations, how to check the man pages, the documentation, then you will be good, really. And and also you will learn to be flexible because. As soon as you start, you know, being able to uh, grind through the documentation and you know where to find the right information, then you become flexible, you become adaptable, you can fit with any kind of situation. Some problem happens and you're working in a company and then all of a sudden, ah, yeah, but I know this can work with this. And then you check the documentation of that software or something and you find what you could do to solve the problem or you find it in a thread or now you can use ChatGPT to help you also. So many, many ways. And uh, of course, it was Google, more Googling before. Now it's more ChatGPT. It helps. But um, yeah, this is <coughs> how it goes. So and, and for the career path, yeah, after the RCE, I think you can do some some uh, more DevOps oriented stuff or you, you can do more some network, some more networking oriented stuff. It really depends. Like I had, for instance, like uh, two weeks ago, I was just um, using Ansible to program some Microtik router uh, switches in this case. And those are cool switches, like they cost, I forgot, like more than a thousand euros each. And I use Ansible to program them. Like you can really use Ansible to um, automate a bunch of things, not only uh, servers, you can automate uh, switches, you can automate routers, you can automate uh, many appliances, you know, as soon as it can run Python, you can use Ansible. So this is pretty cool. And I think that you just think about the, the spectrum of things you can do. You check what's the path you want to take, um, what kind of job you want to do, and yeah, see if it fits for you. But I think the RCSA is a good entry point and it, it will give you good basics, uh, especially for a uh, sysadmin or sysengineer, this kind of this kind of jobs. And then if you want to go more DevOps, it's also possible really. Because I think I know uh, quite some DevOps and very often they lack uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, networking knowledge. So if you have the networking knowledge plus the DevOps, it's, I think, a good combination. You can also combine with other stuff, but I think this uh, in particular is a good combination. Okay, I think I said what I wanted to say. And of, of course, if you check the exam, if you want to take the exam, check my videos how um, with the tips and tricks. Uh, remember the things like, maybe I didn't emphasize enough, I think, in my, in my tips and tricks video. Um, always check that uh, your, the, the firewall is enabled, very important, and also that the uh, SE Linux is enforced. And because if you don't, sometimes they will grade you zero, which is really bad. So you don't want that. Uh, so, but... 
Okay, I was interrupted because um, this is Halloween today and uh, my son and other kids, they came to get some sweets. So anyway, it's okay. I, I was done with the video for the most part. Um, so yeah, make sure to check all my videos, uh, go through them. Um, one thing I, I'm thinking about is that maybe, maybe uh, my videos are not so uh, super beginner friendly. So if you don't know anything about Linux, maybe it's hard. So I think you still need to have some basic training with Linux maybe before you start uh, watching my videos, I should mention it. Um, it's possible, maybe I could do a little introduction to, to Linux, like a new series with different things for Linux, like everything um, from SSH setup, which can get quite tricky. I'm thinking of making just a SSH series first, and then all kinds of uh, command lines that you can use. I'm, I'm now making a modern tool, CLIs, um, like, like CLI tools, and please watch them, they are very cool, but this is also something that's good to upgrade once you know the original tool. So, yeah, uh, you can see that I'm thinking about improving um, the, the, the videos that I'm offering. But, of course, let me know in the comments if you have some suggestions for me, things you would like uh, me to do for you. And, well, good luck. Good luck with the exam. Good luck with studying, um, usually in the other, uh, in the other way around. <laughs> but, yeah, good luck studying, good luck with the exam, and I'm sure you will manage. See you around, guys.